Hi everyone, hope you're here with me. I'm just trying to find myself on the Crafts by the Bow page. So I think we're live. Yay, I think we are. Hi Jane, hiya. Thanks for letting me know you're here. Okay, well that was really fast. I seem to just put it on on the, on the camera and by the time I'd logged into Facebook, there we were. Sort of a week have you had? I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Okay. Sorry, I just had to adjust my monitor. So it was, it was only showing me half a picture. I'm not sure why, but I can see you. I can see all of it now. So today's card, I'm going to use this Peaceful Deer set and I was a few seconds late because I forgot I didn't have the punch ready but I've got the punch now as well and I'm going to show you a couple of cards from uh, my October club class. Hi Janet, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving for yesterday. So I'm just going to show you um, this little class that I'm doing. It's the one that's free with a $35 order or $20 or $12 if you're on my team. And the card that we're making tonight actually comes from one of the cards um, that's in this class. You get um, all the things you need to make five cards. You know, the bases, all the little pieces of twine, ribbon, um, all the cutout shapes. You just don't get the stamp set. So, oh, two Thanksgiving dinners. <laughs> oh, you sound like my kind of girl, Jane. <laughs> I like Thanksgiving dinners. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so the card is one of the cards from that. And I don't think there's anybody online that um, has, has got the, uh, the kit for the class yet. So I'm just gonna show you a quick peek. So these are the other ones that I made. I love this Nature's Harvest set. And you really don't need much at all to make really pretty cards. So, and a little Z fold card. And just that little angled card. So it's going to be a really fun class. And of course, everybody's will be different because if you don't have the Nature's Harvest set, then I've left it so that you can use your own images and your own sentiments. So you get all the papers and everything, but uh, just not a stamp set this time. Because I think you know, a lot of people have got very similar stamp sets. So I thought I'm gonna use this because I'm really liking this layout. Well, let's see, Chinese food instead of Turkey. <gasps> Where did you get 22 degrees sunshine, Janet? Here, it was snowing. Never mind 22 degrees, making me feel jealous. Okay, so tonight I am making that three panel card, but I'm gonna use bits that we had left over from this um, Christmas in July class that we did, that tidings of Christmas. It's really 22 degrees in your backyard. You, you need to sell that as a vacation space. Wow. Yeah, it was nothing like that here in Alberta. It was a jolly cold. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna use this paper just because it's on the top and I don't have to cut anything. So I'm gonna use that paper and I need, oh, so it was nice all weekend, Jane in Ottawa, lovely. So it was cold all weekend in Cochrane and it snowed yesterday and the day before. But fortunately the ground is still warm so it didn't settle. Okay, I'm gonna take thick basic white cardstock. I haven't cut anything at all. I was meant to cut things when I got home from work but I was really late getting home from work and so I didn't have anything cut but fortunately my desk was set up with all the stamps and everything I needed. So I'm going to cut it at four and a quarter by 11 and score at five and a half. But actually I'm gonna score first because I need two card bases. So I'm just gonna pop this in, five and a half, score, turn 
it round and cut at five and uh, four and a quarter. Now I know Laurie's not with us tonight because I believe she's on vacation. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll keep the snow just for a couple of days and then I'll send it up to you maybe mid-October. <laughs> Another couple of days. <laughs> so we've got our card bases. And I'm hoping to have time to make two cards because it is just a quick and easy little layout. Um, excuse me while I just find a bone folder. Sorry to reach over you. Okay, let's just check this side as well. Okay. <laughs> I might, Jane. <laughs> so we had a lovely Thanksgiving, I must admit. It was just Hubby and I. Um, but it was really nice. We we just had a quiet time and Richard did a couple of jobs. I I just cooked dinner and it was it was nice. It was nice. Uh, I, I won't say that I didn't miss having family with us, but uh, it was it was a nice time. Okay, so I'm going to cut my designer series paper and my evening evergreen for my back in layer. Let's see, I'm going to use these scraps at first, I think. So your back in layers, you need three pieces cutting at one and a half. Let's just see if this, oh, that would work. Let's, let's use these strips and put those bigger pieces back. So, did you get time to craft at all over the weekend? Or were you working as well, Jane? Okay, so I need one and a half by three and three quarters. So let me just trim this down to one and a half. We caught up with things on the TV. We um, we just pottered about. But, uh, and I don't get many weekends like that where we haven't got an awful lot to do. Um, so it was nice. We did some yard work before the snow came. Two pieces, let's get another one cut at one and a half. One and a half. I had hoped to do some crafting, but I didn't really get a chance. And by the time I did, it was sort of dark and um, just, just not nice. Could I put a dark paper in the bottom left corner so we can see comment, please? With comments on white background, it makes it hard. Oh. I don't know how it got better. Um, I'm not sure. I, let me just chop this at three and a quarter. Three, three and three quarters. Tell me again, Jana. I'm not sure what you want me to do. I'll do it, but I'm not sure what it was. Okay, so I've got my three pieces of card at one and a half by three and three quarters. And now I need designer series paper at one and a quarter by three and a half. So it's just a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around. And you know what, if I put this on here, you can see the sizes. If you've got a directional paper like this, just be aware that it's narrow at the top, um, rather than cut it and find out it's going the wrong way. So I'm gonna cut this at one and a quarter. And, oh, I could have chopped it down to three and a half first, couldn't I? Never mind. Rather than end up with lots of pieces like that, I'm going to chop this down to three and a half. There we go. And one and a quarter. And one and a quarter again. Okay. I don't need the trimmer anymore for a while. Yeah, I love this paper. You know, when we had it for the Christmas in July um, from the annual catalogue, I thought it was just the nicest paper. And there were so many pieces that I just loved. And this is what I liked as well. The fact that these sides, it didn't even have to be Christmas, holiday, anything. You could use that for, you know, all sorts of cards. 
and this dark green one. I loved this. I did like the other side, but I did love that for masculine cards. Okay, so I've got my three pieces. I'm just going to put them next to each other because when I put them on my card, I want to put them in that order so that it looks like one full pattern. So let's pop them onto these evening evergreen pieces. Yeah, I did like this paper. I, I loved the cards that we made, but the paper was just the star of the show, really. Now you'll have just, um, just that quarter of an inch border. So by the time you get that on there, look, you get that nice even border all the way around. I'm going to lay mine in order, just so that I get them right. Yeah, I like matchy-matchy. Matchy-matchy works for me. And with cards like this, where you don't need much of the paper, you know, it still makes a statement, but you don't, you don't have to use an awful lot of it. And like when we were making the scrap cards last week and the week before, you barely use any paper at all and you know, that way you, you just get your money's worth. It's only expensive paper if you're not using every bit of it that you can. But I like to use all of my paper. Ooh, I've got a bit of glue on there. Let's rub it off with my finger. And once it's dry, I'll put the glue eraser over it. You know, I try so hard with that word eraser. I, I, I only say eraser on here because that's not what we call it in the UK. But the thing that we call it in the UK is not a good one to have uh, to say to you. Oh, you finished all those 40 cards? Wow, well done. I bet he loved them. And you know, the people he sends them to from work, they will love them too. Yeah, Jane, you know what I mean. <laughs> I find it so hard. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to put these three pieces across. Oh, that's nice on just the white. And to line them up, I actually turn it this way. And um, I find it easier to see. And I put my top one, then I put my bottom one, then I put the middle one in. So that way it just makes it a little bit a little bit easier for you to see what the gap has to be and where each piece goes and I'm not measuring or fiddling round and I've not put two pieces in and then found that I've got too big a space at the bottom you, you made 75 birthday cards as well Janet you're like a card making machine I bet his clients, they can't wait to have a birthday or you know, a holiday card. And they think, oh, what are we getting this year? Do they know that it's his mum that makes them for him? Or do they think that maybe he goes and makes them? I'm using wet glue so that I can move it around if I need to as well. Oh, I nearly stuck that on upside down. Okay, now I'm going to turn it that way and just check that I've got the tops of those straight. Oops. There we go. And I still move it just because I've got that liquid glue. So there we are. Okay, now what I've done is I've looked through my little bag where I put lots and lots of, you know, just my off cuts of these kind of things. So if I've been cutting and I've got tiny bits left, I'll cut a few extra or I might cut a whole pile and not use them all. So I keep all these together 
and I went through to find what I had. See, I've got circles, I've got tailored tag pieces, I've got the collar and contour dies, the looks like the rectangle dies, and the stitch so sweetly dies. I just keep all of those little pieces. And when I'm starting to make a card like this, it's all done. <laughs> Jane, do you measure? <laughs> Just Janet and I that don't measure anything, is it? <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to use this piece. And I'm pretty sure that's from that unicorn set. Oh, it isn't. Is it from this Tasteful Touches? Oh, let's see. It is. It's the one from Tasteful Touches. And I think this one's from the unicorn set. I tried to grab a few that I know I use all the time. So I'm using this one. And this, it, this was going to be my next one to use with this. But actually, I also got out my stitched rectangles. And when I got the stitched rectangles out, I suddenly had sort of a brainwave for the next card. So I'm using this one for the next card. I don't have many brainwaves. It's, sometimes I think my brain's just asleep. <laughs> That's okay to measure, Jane. It's okay. So I'm going to use this and it's going to go for my sentiment and it's also going to have my image on. Now, on this one that I made, you can see that I did the image separately and then a little um, bannered end piece for the sentiment. But I just thought I might like it all on one this time. So I've got my little deer and I'm going to use this one. The oh, what fun deer. So let's find a a block to put him on, find where he is. Oh. That's a crinkly noise, I am sorry. Yeah, let's pop him on there. And I'm going to stamp him on a little piece of scrap. <laughs> I think so, Jane. <laughs> I can't really blame the snow. I, th I think my brain's always like this. Okay, so what, what colour did I even get out? Sahara sand, I think. Oh no, soft suede. See, I tell you, I've been at work too long today. Yeah, let's pop him there. Okay. Oh, that's quite dark, isn't it? Let's have a little look. What is like if I stamp him off? If I don't hold it down quite so much, I don't know if I want him as dark as that. A little bit tricky to see there. Mm, I don't know. I'll punch them both out and we'll see. Yeah, I like these, dear. It's such an easy one to do. I should have come to the crop with you and uh, stamped a few out. Have you still got some left, Janet? If you have, you could make this card. I haven't been to a crop for just the longest time. Uh, but most of the crops near me that I have seen, they're for scrapbooking and just serious scrapbooking. And I'm not really a serious scrapbooker. Oh, a tan colour. Was it a stamping up colour or just a tan colour? But that was nice. Okay, let's have a look. See which little deer we're going to keep. And just line him up in there. I sort of press the punch halfway down just to hold it so that I can wiggle it about if I need to. Ooh, I love the way they jump out those. I think this one's a bit lighter than I want. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna punch them both out anyway. Get rid of these little pieces. And I want to put some trees on the background here. So I'm going to take out the little trees. I'm going to take this set of three. And let's see where they are. I'll put it on another little block. And I've got I've got my evening evergreen. So I'm Going to do that one, but I'll I might stamp off as well. 
because I want to put some little trees on the back but, um, and I want to put the sentiment on. I might actually do the sentiment first. Okay, so I've got the little Merry Christmas out of there. Let's put it on this little tiny block. Oh, there's a piece of fluff on there. I don't want a piece of fluff. So knowing my luck, it'll fall down and I'll end up stamping it. Oops. There we go. Let's try that. Okay, and it's not very clean. Right, so I'm just going to get a, a little um, hand, wi hand wipe, a little sanitizer one. Just take that off. Looks like it's glue. There we go. Now I can see through it. Pop that back in that packet. It's probably about time to be cleaning them. Yeah, I could go. I could do it in that light green, the soft succulent, but it would mean I'd have to get up off my chair. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do. Going to do it in the dark. So let's let's just see what the sentiments like in in the darker green. I could get up off my chair, Janet. I could. Right. I'm going to move that away actually. And I might just put it right across the bottom. Oh, I'll have to move it down so I can see that. I'm sorry if you can't see. Okay. And then let me look at these trees. See how tall they are on that. I think they're going to be a bit too long on that one. I'm going to go with the smaller trees. Just because I've stamped my sentiment further further up than I thought I was going to. Oh, the deer in the light green, sorry. Do you know, <laughs> I, I think I needed to have a nap when I got in from work. Um, the preschoolers were uh, exuberant today, shall we say. Um, where's the other tree? Right, a bit small. Yeah, let's take that noisy thing off. Gone. And this tree, let's see how, how tall is this tree? Is it about the same? Yeah, that's too tall as well. We're going to use these little trees then. Yeah, let's just use these little tiny weeny ones. Oh, I like all three shades of that, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to do them across the back here. So I'm going to start with the dark one here. And then sort of just keep going along. You know, I'm only going to put the three on. I'm not going to go all the way across. I'm just going to put the three on. So let's clean that. Yeah, I, I think... I think the preschoolers were all full of turkey and trimmings and maybe lots of pumpkin pie and candy. They were just, I mean, it was lovely, but they were just so excitable today. So it was, uh, it was a long day. Okay, let's go back to finding our deer. So I'm just going to pop him over here like this. Now, you could do more trees across if you wanted. What do you think? Do you think I should do more trees like this behind him? Give me a, give me a clue. Because uh, I could easily just put some more on. And then he's just going to go on here. What do you think, ladies? More trees? Oh, nope. Okay, nope. Thank you. Let's put this on the back. And I'm going to use up these little uh, edge pieces as well. I've got lots of them. Yeah, my three-year-olds were crankier than the four-year-olds. But they were just... I think they were excited to be back as well. Because uh, we'd had four days off. And it's a lot for little ones once you start having, you know, lots of days off. Going that way, so I'm going to put him over here. Oops. Can you 
move it up a little bit and then I'm going to put one dimensional on his head and I'm going to put glue on the rest and there's my liquid glue where did I put it and now I had it under there yep I'm going to put a bit on his tummy and the top of his legs there we go And pop him there like that and then that one little dimensional under his head will stop him from getting squashed and then I've got my little red rhinestones out for his nose not this big one here that's uh, that's from holiday rhinestones I don't know why I put it on there I'm just gonna put this one little red one on his little nose And I'm just going to put two more little red ones over here, just so that it follows that colour through. Okay. Right, so there's our basic little card. And I, I like that. It's really pretty. I love this little deer on there. But I wanted to make a second one as well. Same, same style and everything, just a different paper. And I want to show you something different with the deer that I've only just learned. I, I did have a way that I was cutting out the deer from the free designer series paper. But um, one of my friends, Glenda Mollett, who is off in Port Alberni, she showed me how to cut it out a different way and I loved it. So I'm going to get my different paper. So this is the free paper. If you don't have the free paper, you know, use one of these papers again. That works just as nicely. And all I'm going to do is use the other card base that we cut when we made this one. But I'll just move that over there so I don't end up stamping on him. <laughs> yeah, that little red nose just sets him off. Isn't it? Little Rudolph there. So I need, I was going to use this paper and you remember I said that just before I went live I had this idea and did it just slightly differently. Well, let me show you what I did. Let's get some of this paper on with the deers going the wrong way as we need that. And I'm using this paper and I'm going, instead of cutting the cardstock and the design series paper. I'm going to use the stitched rectangles and I have already cut it out. So I'm going to use this set and I'm going to use the biggest one and the next one down. Okay, so those two. And if you don't have the paper, it doesn't matter. You can use a different paper that you've got or you can use just a, a, a card just the cardstock. So this is the largest one and I've cut it as well in the paper just so that you can see. And I'm, a, I'm going to put white on top. So the second size down I cut just in white cardstock and that gives you just a little different sort of a look because you've got those stitched edge pieces and it goes on the paper. If you have it on the paper, you won't see an awful lot of the design. You can just see different colours. You can't always tell that it's a tree. So, let's fold this base in half. Hi Janice. How are you doing? You got snow in Airdrie? I was all melted. So, ours is gone. We're making just this very simple three panel card, Janice. Um, I actually posted a card for you today that has our team um, social information in and a card that we're making for the team social. So watch out for that. It'll probably take the longest time to get to you. you know, I, I could get it to go to Spain before it gets to Calgary usually. So. Let's just see. Let's see how this is. They're a little bit wider than the pieces that I'd cut for this card. 
we don't get quite as much gap between. But I think it's still going to be pretty. So, but you know, I think I might have liked it so it was the this one on the green. Let me get the little cutting emboss machine and let's make these smaller. So, let me find my little machine. I think I still like it with the designer series paper on the top. So I need the second one down because it's going to be smaller. Let's move this little card. Okay, it's starting to get dark here now, and uh, it's getting dark early on an evening. I'm not so happy with it. Okay, I don't need that one because it's for embossing. I just need my white ones. Let's put these on, and all I need to do is put this. Oops, Let's move these so you can see what I'm actually doing. I just need to put this on the piece I'd already cut out. And then you will actually see more of the tree as well. Just run that through. Okay, I'm going to throw that little window frame away. Do the second one. Make sure that's just not quite straight. If you put these in so that the end of the die is flat and straight going in, sometimes it can really buck against you and it can make the most awful noises. I think they actually like a little angle to go through first. It just seems to feed in a little bit easier. Okay, last one. Let's put it on an angle. Okay. That's what I get for changing my mind five minutes before we started. I'm thinking I'd do something different. Okay, let's pop this stitched rectangle back. So I've now got my garden green cut with the biggest ones and my paper, my design series paper cut with the second one down. Okay. And these are a little bit narrower than these ones I find. So I tend to use these for card layers and these not so much for card layers, but they're, they're good for this. Okay. paper back in line and we'll just attach these I'm going to use the liquid glue again and pop them on this garden green and it's not as much contrast as the other card that I made with the white and then the, the trees on just because that design series paper had white in I could have put these on a white back in and made my card base coloured. That would have been nice too. Okay. Now I look away, Jane, while I don't measure. <laughs> Janet, you're fine, you can watch. There's not so much of a gap between them this time either, so it's easier, easier to get them in the right place. And again, I'm just going to turn it round. I just find it easier to see in a portrait way. And I know we've only got a tiny gap, so I probably don't even need to worry about lining it up so much. I'll put my bottom one on next. And because it's the liquid glue, I can just move it around quickly if I need to. It won't be dry by the time I get the third one on. Move that down a little bit. There we go. Just check. Yep, and there's plenty of room in the middle. See, Janet, we don't need to measure, do we? Okay, and let's put it back this way and just make sure that the tops are straight. There we go. Okay. And again.
again I'm going to choose one of my um, pre-cut pieces I'll pop that back just for the sizings again so I've now got lots of the white stitched rectangles let's see and we've got this what do you think ladies what do you like best um, let's have a look what else we've got so that I don't have to cut anything else I think these are too yeah they're too wide okay I don't think there's any narrower pieces in there Ooh, there is a piece from a different card I was making that says Merry Christmas let's have a look I wonder if that deer would fit on there I would really like that to be a bit longer but the fact that I've already got it cut out is making me a bit lazy I think what do you think ladies what shall I use the small rectangle the small stitched ones that I had these these ones is it that one that you like yeah okay I'll just wait because I can't see yet okay so I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to put the trees on just like we did here but I am going to show you that different way to cut the deer out so let me find my little scrap piece again and get the green ink out again did I put those trees away I probably did you know uh, thinking I was tidying up I did, there they are. So we're using the tiny weenie tree. I nearly put it on back to front then. Okay. Pop it on here. But I might do just a few more. And this one. Oh, that wasn't quite what I wanted. There we go. And let's just stamp that one off. Oh, I think I've got something just underneath there. So let me just try that again. I'm just going to take that off. I think it's one of, the, like one of those dimensional papers or something under there. It was just making it not flat. So I'm going to put this over to one side and let's, let's use this one. Uh, I don't think I've got a smaller one. Oh, I think that's the same though. Okay, I can move this out of the way now. Oh, did it again. I don't know what that is. It worked last time. How strange. I don't know. I don't think I've got anything underneath my stamp pad. Yeah. This is the third one. That was peculiar. And I'm going to put our little sentiment over here. Let's see if that Merry Christmas one will fit on again. If not, I'll just do one of the other sentiments. Let's see. Have I still got that Merry Christmas out? Yep. So I'm thinking it will just fit on that piece. I just need to move it a little bit forward. And I'm sorry if you can see my head just so that I know I've got it in a straight line. There we go. I'm going to pop that ink back. Now, instead of using the little deer that we've already stamped and cut out, I'm going to use one of the ones from the paper. And I know we've looked at these before, and when you try to stamp them out, these go the wrong way. Punch them out, I'm afraid, I meant. So they go the wrong way, so. What I'm going to do is just a little trick that, as I say, my friend Glenda showed me. So you just need to get a piece of copy paper. And I've got it folded in half. Okay. That's not very straight though, that piece, Diane. Let's find a straight piece of copy paper. Just because otherwise when I try to line that up, uh, I'll end up and it'll be a bit wibbly wobbly. So let's just cut a piece off here. I'm just going 
going to make it a bit smaller. Okay. So I've got my copy paper and I'm just going to fold it in half like this. And I want it so that when I put it into the punch here, uh, it will go all the way down to the bottom. That's why I didn't want that wobbly piece in case it ended up being you know, a bit slanted. So it's going to go all the way down to the bottom and I'm just going to punch it out. Okay, and you have to take it out carefully so that you don't get these legs stuck. Oh, out you come. Okay. So I know that this is just as it's punched from here. If you turn it over and put this little deer inside and then spend a, a minute or two just lining him up. And what you need to end up with is that little gap round his legs so that he's just cut out. He's going to cut out with a nice even line all the way around him. And to get him to sit, stay still, I'm going to put a little bit of washi tape on. You could use a piece of post-it note. But I'm just going to use washi tape because it's handy. And I don't want it quite as sticky, so I'm just going to take some of that stick off. And then put that down, make sure it's still lined up. Move that little ear. Okay, so, and I'm going to stick it so that the copy paper is actually stuck onto the design series paper. I just, I know it's a little bit OCD, but I just want those legs to be in the right place too. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to leave that like that. I'm going to turn it back over. So this was the front. I'm going to pop it in here, just it in carefully, and make it so that the red, like the gingham check, is exactly in the punch. Okay, it's a little bit thick to punch out because you've now got three layers in there. Okay, I'm going to turn him over. Take off that little bit of washi tape and that little bit off his leg. And so now you get the little deer with the white round him as well. Oh, and still bits of washi tape. Okay. So you can then use him on here so that he's looking that, you know, going the right way. Um, let me just see. Let's, let's have this attached and then you can see what I mean. So, just means that you can get the most out of that paper. Hi Judy, how are you? We've been making um, just a very simple layout, a little three, three panel card. Uh, let's put this on here. What time are we at? Oh, we've got five minutes left. And then I was just showing you how to cut the little deer out. I'll show you once again. Let's take this piece out. So you just need a little piece of copy paper. Fold it in half. And um, all you do is you pop this into your punch like this. Push it down in the punch as far as it'll go. Okay. Oops. And then take it out gently because those legs, they stick in the, the rest of the punch. And then you need to just get your little deer that you want. And ordinarily, the punch won't punch this out because it's looking the wrong way. Like these are looking to the left and when it's punched, it looks to the right. So if I write on here, this is the front. As you put it in into the punch, this is how it cuts out. But if you turn it over, get this little deer, open your copy paper, and just slide him in here. I know it's getting a little bit dark to see, but if you just line him up so that he's got a white border all the way around him, around his little legs and everything, that's what we want. And you can either put a little piece of post-it note on, or I'm using just a little piece of washi tape. Just take the sticky off. And then let's see. 
Let's check that that's still lined up. I think his legs need to come down a little bit. I think I need to put a light on very soon. I don't like it when I have to put lights on. I like, I like it when it's uh, summertime. Let's just line them up again. There we go. I've got a little piece of paper over his head. And then I'm just going to move his legs because can you see they're not quite in the middle. Turn it back over so you can see where it says front. Line it up in here. And make it so that you can just get the red side right in the middle of the punch. Punch him out. Take these little tiny pieces of washi tape off. And now, if I put him on a piece of card, you can see. You see he's got that nice little white line all the way around him. And it's just as though you've punched these ones out on the DSP where they do actually face to the left. Okay, so I'm just going to pop him on here. Now, we did have another deer that we'd already cut out for here as well. But I, li I quite like the little red one, so we'll pop that one on. I'm going to put a little dimensional on the back of his head, just like we did the first one, and some glue on his body and on his legs. There we go. We'll just pop him on here. Okay, and We'll find a little, a little red nose for him. And get those little, um, those little red rhinestones back out. Pop one on his nose. It's a bit harder to see on the on the red, but you can just see him. It shows it shows up more on the the little brown one. And then. I'm just going to put my other two over here this time, rather than on the designer series paper. And there we are. So there's that very fast and easy little three panel card with our tidings paper and then the free paper that we got from Celebration. And pop him on as well. So thank you for watching. No, I'm not clever, Judy. Um, another demonstrator showed me how to do it. I was trying to do it and draw around him and turn him over. And um, she said to me, but I think you should be able to do it with acetate. And you can do it with folded acetate. But I found it, I found it really hard to punch through the acetate. And um, so she said, well, try copy paper. So I did. And that's that's the result and it just means that all of this paper that I've got where you know I punched out the deer going the right way and these ones are going the wrong way I thought I was going to have to just find another use for that but I didn't so that is my other use so thanks for joining me ladies it it's always fun to sit and chat with you on a Tuesday it makes my day a whole lot better thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all again soon I'm actually going to work on a stepped up version of this, I think. I'm, I've got about three quarters of an hour of light left, I think. So I'm going to make another one. Uh, oh, thanks, Janet. That's nice. Thanks, Judy. You have a lovely evening too. And I'll see you all again next, next Tuesday. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Night, Jane.